Here's the second one I did, which is closer to two and a half by three and a half, it's pretty dead on, than the first time I tried, and smoother, so you can see it is like kind of ripped right here. So it works on heavy vellum, but... I would say they should have put these grips like closer in because then you could arrange it to be right next to each other at the very like edge so you're not wasting material. I think what I would do is probably put like a little bit of hot glue or something on right here so that I can get it close enough. Let's try another one. I don't have a cutting mat because I don't do a lot of cutting for my paintings. I most of the time I'm framing them, so I don't really need to worry about what they look like cut wise. But let's see, since I have one corner on the paper, maybe it'll hold the paper and I can get pretty close right here. Yeah, it's not moving. So that might work. You gotta make sure you get the actual thing in the rail because it doesn't always want to go in there very easily. And I think that's what happened with the first time I cut, was it wasn't actually in there. I think it's in there now. And I think I was pushing too hard. No, the paper's still moving. Great. Yeah, the paper's moving. So, yeah, the grips are a problem. I'm gonna try the hot glue thing and then I'll be back. We'll try it. We'll see if it helps. The outcome of erasing on acetate um, seems easier. Easier as in it comes off easier. Um, smears probably about the same. Um, oops. There we go, that'll give us a chance to try the sandpaper eraser on it. Just gonna make this all red. I was gonna make it more complicated, but nah, nah. We'll just make it all. Just add a bunch of paint, see what happens. So far the translucentness of this vellum is awesome. It, it, I would say it's pretty similar to acetate that I use. Pretty similar. Better than Yupo. Yupo wouldn't even have like half this much color coming through. One thing I don't like is look how it like bows. Look at that. The acetate that I have is Duralar, and it actually says that it's a uh, like bend and crease and all of that like resistant. Where this is just like how paper is after you cut it, it like kind of bows and gets all weird, especially when you have paint on it and stuff. But I'm not using any water, and the paint isn't like bubbling or warping the paper at all just the paper itself all together is bowing i think it's just from cutting it i don't know put something on top of it make it flat and it look fine uh what i do like about this film is it has texture and i think the texture actually um takes the paint oops better um, 
I mean, it's paper, it's not polyurethane, like acetate is. Acetate's polyurethane. Vellum is paper, some dumb. Where's the... Okay. <sighs> what is this made out of? Let me just Google it. What is vellum made out of? I'm pretty sure it's just a type of paper. But let's double check, because I don't know that much about it. Uh, modern imitation vellum is made from plastic si plasticized rag cotton or fibers from interior tree bark. Terms include paper vellum, Japanese vellum, the vegetable vellum. Paper vellum is usually translucent. And, um, so yes, it's a paper. It is made from a tree. I'm gonna say. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it, but there is like a little bit of a warpiness. All right, that looks pretty good. I would probably use ink if I was gonna do line work on this vellum because it has a, it gives the color pencil a ton of texture, which is great if you're going for that. But it looks kind of like um, crayon, crayon texture. Let's finish it up. I'm gonna paint the whole thing, I think, just so we get a good. Boop, boop. Just touch the edges so they don't smear into each other. All right. Let that dry and we'll come back with doing the background. And maybe I'll do some ink on the front to, uh, I don't know. Give it more something. You see the paper is warping a little bit. Just like any other kind of paper that you'd paint on. I think it'd be okay though if I put it under a book. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I put, uh, got a little messier right here, but put hot glue all the way around. A little crazy. See if it helps. I feel like I shouldn't have to do that, but Ooh, if it's a tiny piece, it's still gonna be a problem, looks like. But maybe because I put it all the way around, it'll stick good. Maybe. So oh, it's actually kind of sticking to it. This might work. Oh. So it seems kind of like I might be pushing too hard. Also, I'm not sure how this gripper is supposed to work. How to make it like, it's supposed to make it better. Like, I'm not sure how you're supposed to hold it. Okay, that person's holding it like this. Kind of, I think. It says thick material, hand, hand, blah, thick material, freehand cutting, which I don't think. <laughs> Maybe thick material if you push hard, but if you push hard, then it's even harder to use. I don't know. I'd say you cut through like regular paper really easily, but this like plasticky paper, maybe not. I don't know. You gotta get it lined up like perfectly, otherwise it's like not right. And I'm gonna hold it like this, and then go around. I think it helps to lift it and pick it back up again, like put it back on again. It says you can go at a steady pace and that's like supposed to be recommended. See if I did it right this time. Look at that. It's like sticking to the thing. I'm a genius. Although I feel like I shouldn't have to do that. Fiskers, do better grips. What I was wanting out of this was to be able to put it very close to the edge. Like right on the edge, side by side. So I'm not like wasting material to use this. And I think with my uh, hot glue method, it, it you could do that, yeah. I think that would work now. 
But if you're like me and you really don't feel like spending tons of money on a rotary cutter, which I would really like to have one, but yeah, I just don't, I don't want to. I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a rotary cutter. I have a really cheap, like, paper cutter and oh my gosh, that thing is so unaligned. Like, you think you could, like, on the paper cutter, you could just, like, lay it up like this to the grid and then like cut and be like straight and then it's not it's not and you can't line it up to like the plasticky edge either where like the thing stops you you can't line it up to that either and it's not straight you have to like literally line up the best way you can to the grid and then you have to take one little cutter because there's two on there line it up right here line it up right here with the line you drew with a ruler so you have more time to make sure that it's straight and then cut it. It's like the worst. Like, hey, um, this would be really awesome if it works smoothly. <laughs> this doesn't work smoothly, but I think if I'd done it a bunch of times, then I might get in the motion of doing it and then maybe it would be a good tool for me. I would, I would give this like a, if they added better grips, like if they did a better um, way of making it grip the paper so the paper doesn't move around, I would say it's like good, like you should buy it. Even if the little like bladey thing's a little fidgety because um, even though you can't just go like you should be able to do, like in my opinion, you should be able to just go because of the description, not on this, but on the, the tracers, these parts, the stencils, the description says keep a steady pace and you know and then it's supposed to turn out fine um i don't think there's any way i could keep a steady pace like the thing kind of gets stuck a little and maybe it's just the way i'm holding it but it doesn't really i didn't really see anything on here that tells you like how to hold it correctly yeah i don't see anything that says directions it just says warranty <laughs> we need to get a lifetime warranty oh, i should have read the front before i opened it I think the freehand knife is going to be um really useful for me because then it's like i already have a rotary knife like a hand rotary knife and a tracing one or stencil tracing one. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a loss. So like this thing, I could just go ch -ch -ch, and I think this would work a lot faster. The only problem is, is the size that I want. I actually need this to put it in that spot because it's not, as you can see, it doesn't trace against for that size. And you know, I could just be like, well, I'm not gonna make that size. I'll just make the size that I actually traced on the inside and that'd be great. For myself but I'm part of a uh, art card trading club and that's the size that they require so that's what I actually got this for was I thought it would make it faster for me than having to like paranoidly like line up all the lines and try to make it like perfect and then like try to use my stupid paper cutter that like can't cut straight <laughs> Um, because I've already had some problems with that <laughs> and I had tried to do it by hand too with scissors and that didn't turn out right because I have a tremor so yeah so cutting paper is like my handicap in art life this will work I think this will work because I put hot glue on it not to be repetitive but with the hot glue this will work so not a bad review not bad it's not a perfect product, but um, it will work for me. And I think I can I think I can come up with a good way to get it so that it's not wasting paper now that I uh, understand how to use it. I guess I could have used uh, regular paper for the tester, but I wanted to test I want to test something that isn't super easy to cut. So this is like a it's kind of plasticky ASMR <laughs> ASMR. Um, so let's try like a piece of copy paper. Let's try to make it like close so we're not wasting. See the thing is I think I need to put some hot glue like on the actual edge. Turn this. Oh there we go. We'll just oh it is moving. That's annoying. I guess you could go at a steady pace if you had a good grip on it. Try holding it this way, I guess. <laughs> Your paper's moving around though. Okay, so that works, that, yeah. And it cuts it pretty easily. Well, I didn't, oh, I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> but it did work. Um, yeah, so I would say my only complaint, cause that time it, the cutter went a lot easier. So I think it was just having a hard time with this like plasticky paper. Um, so I'll have to try it on acetate and see if it actually works on the acetate too. I think I have leftover acetate. 
I must have used my scraps already because I was making cards. <laughs> oh well. Let's turn it on this piece of cardboard. <laughs> Let's cut everything. This is going to turn into a video where I just cut like everything. Like those videos where they put everything in the microwave where they put everything in some kind of like destroyer of some kind. Let's try it. I, try, I like holding it with the dip up like this I think. Yeah there we go. Much easier. Let's turn it. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Getting excited. Check that out. That was smooth. <laughs> Rewind to the beginning of the video where you're watching me struggle. That was smooth. Look at that. And it, uh, I should have pushed harder probably. But, uh, yeah, cardboard. I guess thin cardboard. Just threw that on my computer. <laughs> Ooh, let's do watercolor paper. We're going to do this kind because this kind sucks and I don't care about wasting it. I mean, I care about wasting paper, but I'll just recycle it into new paper. This is 140 pounds or 300 G. I guess technically this would be going inward a little bit, so it wouldn't be the very edge. Maybe on the first one, but I could line up the other ones because it's trans, like I could see through it. But, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I have to figure that out. I'll figure it out. There'll be a way to do it, I'm sure. Oops. Oops. See what I'm doing. Like, go, go, turn, go, turn. The paper's too big to turn. Let me line it back up again. Okay, let's try that again. We're failing. There we go. This is on my heavy duty paper. Oh, do I got it? I'll go on the thingy. Go on the thingy. Oh, I'm gonna like cut the crap out of myself. There we go. Yeah, so it can cut through that too. Bam. Doable. Uh, probably not a messy work surface so that you can actually turn it. Um, so you just watched me do it on the other thing is if you turn it a lot easier, especially if you don't lift it at all. I kept, <laughs> I kept not holding it down. <laughs> Good. It works with hot glue. <laughs> so I got it hot with the hair dryer and then I just set it right here and left this on top of it like that. Until it was like not warm anymore. And now it's not all weird anymore. See? So, it must have some plastic in it. It must be that paper plastic, whatever it said on Google mix, which is, I guess, it said is common in modern vellum. Really glad it's not made out of animal parts, because yuck. Um, so I don't know how I feel about this vellum. I don't know if I'll buy it again. I kind of like it, but it randomly just like kind of bows. Like you'll see it as you watch me paint this and stuff. Like every time it like dries and I've had it flat and it's flat. And then as soon as I start painting it, like the whole thing bows. It's kind of weird. So, I don't know. It works for what I'm doing. Is It looks good. It works. It doesn't fall apart from the paint or anything. Um, I did this lighter color on the petals with diluted water and little spots and it's good. Um, I used that spray that I showed you before putting the, the watered down paint on top of it. Um, Yeah, so I don't know. If you wanted a cheaper option, 
to do cell painting. Heavy vellum will work. Okay, bye. Thank you. Have a nice day.